grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we've all heard the phrase, first things first. In Stephen Covey's best-selling book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he lists habit number three as putting first things first. In other words, when you're planning a project, when you're, when you're setting a goal for yourself, you need to prioritize the steps, putting the most important things first, to set that foundation on which everything else is going to be built. Doing things in the proper order is crucial to the success of that project or achieving that goal. Now, this certainly translates to life. Putting first things first in life means being clear about your foundation, your priorities, and acting on them. And that sounds like common sense. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But it's just as easy to get things in the wrong order, to put the wrong things first. In fact, I think it's much easier to do that, to mess up our priorities because of our sinful nature. It's easier to eat dessert than broccoli or Brussels sprouts. It's easier to watch TV than to clean the bathroom or do the dishes. It's easier to sleep in in the morning than to get up and exercise or go to work or come to church. Our sinful nature makes us drift toward the wrong decisions. And this is really what our lessons are about today. So I'd like to talk about putting things in the right order, first things first. In other words, living a God-pleasing life turning to God, which glorifies him and gives us peace. Our Old Testament lesson teaches us a simple lesson, putting trust in man, in other words, trusting only in ourselves, leads to uncertainty. When we look to ourselves or other people for all of the answers, life is uncertain. Now, I don't mean that we don't listen to someone who has expertise in an area that we don't. If you are sick, please get your answers from a competent doctor. If you need financial advice, don't get your advice from someone who is in debt up to their eyeballs. If you're an athlete, listen to your coach. Proverbs 13:20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Now, along these same lines, when you want to know the answers of life, when you're looking at the big picture, when you want to know your purpose, when, when you want to know from where your hope comes, turn to the Lord. Listen to the truth. He speaks his truth through his word. His word is truth, and it can be trusted. When your trust is in the Lord, you don't need to fear the difficult times or the tough decisions. Now, we know that these difficult times will come, those difficult decisions will arise. We all know that, but you don't need to fear them. When you need to make the right decision, prayer and his word will give you the right answer. Trust in the Lord will give you the blessing of truth. Now, the prayer is that we recognize God's will and we have the faith to realize it and follow it, to listen to him. When you're talking about your path, when you, you're talking about your lifestyle, when you're, when you're talking about right and wrong, turn to the Lord and have the faith to accept the truth. Don't get your advice from a celebrity whose life is questionable at best. Don't get your advice from a friend who hasn't lived the situation that you're in. Don't get your advice from a song sung by someone whose life is in shambles. That makes as much sense as going to a plumber for medical advice. Now, if you need plumbing advice, go to that plumber. In other words, get the facts from the right people, but ultimately, your greatest priority is to turn to the Lord. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. In our Old Testament lesson, the Lord is warning Jeremiah that his people are headed down the wrong spiritual path. He's pointing out that their sins are so severe that they are turning their backs on the Lord. 
God warns that if you turn your back too far for too long, you perish. But the person who trusts in God will be saved. And to this day, until Jesus comes again, God continues to offer hope to those who turn away from sin and seek his forgiveness. This is also a prayer for a certain nation, I believe, but that's a different sermon. In our gospel lesson from Luke 6, Jesus teaches us right from wrong. These are called the Beatitudes. Now, the definition of Beatitude is really like a supreme blessing. So it's a good thing, and we want to learn from this. On a side note, we also find the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew, but these are two different sermons of Jesus. In Matthew, we find the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount, and here, as I read, Jesus is on a level place, so many times we call this the Sermon on the Plain. And here we find a variation of the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. Because like any good speaker who travels and talks to groups of people, Jesus would repeat the important lessons to different groups. Many times the Beatitudes, along with the woes that I read, are misunderstood. They are many times read and unfortunately taught in a very negative and depressing way. What we consider the negative things, being poor, being hungry, crying, being hated because of our faith in Jesus Christ, are the blessings? These are the things that, that we should rejoice about that leads to good blessings? It's as if the only way to be saved is to have nothing and be miserable. And then the things we consider positive wealth, food to eat, laughing, having people talk well about us, these are the things that send us to hell? Now how can this be? What is Jesus trying to teach us? Because there is an abundance of scripture that says the complete opposite. Psalm 22 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and there are so many more that tell us that all good things come from God. So how could these condemn us? I'm asked many times, if, if, I, if I'm greatly blessed and have a comfortable life, am I condemned? And really, the answer to this is simply the title of this sermon, First Things First. It has to do with priorities. What is most important? Jesus is being very clear as to where your focus should and shouldn't be. Don't judge your salvation against your earthly blessings or lack thereof. There are plenty of people who we say have it all that are going to heaven. And there's plenty more who we would say have nothing at all that aren't going to heaven. Those are not the deciding factors that we look at. Instead, focus on the promise of Jesus Christ. Put the Lord first. Our gospel lesson doesn't mean a person won't be blessed here on earth, but the warning is for those who simply live for today, for those who put earthly things before God. These people are neglecting. In other words, they're turning their backs on the ways of God and the care of his people. The greatest warning signs of this is when pride and self-interest are the most appealing to you, than, they're more appealing to you than serving the Lord. And we all slip up. And when this happens, repent. By his grace, he forgives you, which establishes your focus on him again. Repentance and forgiveness turns you back around, facing Jesus Christ, putting him first. Don't forget what he has done for you. Don't forget that gospel message. This is what our epistle lesson from 1 Corinthians is teaching us. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ comes first, it is the foundation of everything, your very life and purpose. If Christ wasn't raised from the dead, then nothing else really would matter, and you could put anything ahead of God that you wanted to. I chuckle because Paul basically says, if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, what am I doing up here talking to you right now? But the truth is, Christ is raised from the dead. And because he is raised from the dead, there is salvation for you. And that is the most important thing. Romans 6, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Nothing else should come before that. 
first things first. You know, this, this lesson, this sermon is not rocket science. I could have explained this to you in two sentences, which would have made some of you happy probably. Whether you have that one specific question that you need answered, or really you're looking to live your life in a God-pleasing way, the answer is the same. Quite simply, God put you first by sending his son to die for you. Jesus came to earth. His priority was to defeat death and save you. John 15, 13, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And that is what Jesus did for you. He put you first, so you put him first. How do we do that? 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. And it's really that simple. We are able to love one another only because we have received love from Jesus, who loved us first. Now the love that we have for God cannot be separated from faith. That is faith in Christ and what he did for us. We come to the Father only through Jesus Christ, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You have a responsibility to put God first through his son, Jesus Christ. You have a responsibility to those around you, to your family, to your friends, to your co-workers, even the stranger on the sidewalk, to put Christ first. When we practice to put God first in our lives, including our decisions, including our relationships, our goals, and our priorities, it becomes second nature to put the Lord first. And I know that sometimes it's tough to put God first, and sometimes we simply forget to. Repent and admit your weaknesses and limitations to God. He understands. Hebrews 4, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. When you put first things first, in other words, when you put your trust in Christ rather than turning your back on him and putting other things first, you can come to him expecting mercy and healing and life. When you put your trust in Christ, you receive God's forgiveness and strength lead a holy life. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the gathering of our offerings.